Okay, looks like we're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, in case you guys are new to the stream, welcome. This is Dragon Quest Three for the Game Boy Color. Well, technically Dragon Warrior Three, but I don't like drunk calling it Warrior, so it's Dragon Quest. And yeah, um, <laughs> I I apologize if I'm a little bit quieter than normal. I I know that this is oh my Game Boy Advance isn't on. Okay, that would explain it. Um, anyway, um. I'm a little bit tired today, so if you're wondering why I might be a little bit quieter than normal, that's probably it, but this is meant to be chill, chill anyway, so no big deal. Okay, so if you were... Oh, the TV sound still is on. What the... What? What the hell happened? Oh, I pumped the... <laughs> Okay, well, better to get that out of the way at the beginning of the stream than at the end. <laughs> uh, so, I accidentally bumped my power strip and the, the, game, the GameCube reset. Okay, that's one hell of a way to start. Anyway, um, just in case you're, you are unfamiliar with the stream or unfamiliar with Dragon Quest in general. Um, last time, we beat up Kandar and got the king's crown back. So this time we're going to go to um no annuals and f deal with their kind of cursed town business. So yeah, um but before we do that, I'm going to take a quick sh stop at the weapon shop to see if we can upgrade anybody. I don't think we've got enough money to upgrade or and, and I don't actually think they've got anything that's an upgrade here anyway. So um No, yeah, we, we kind of got most of our upgrades at Kazaba, so we're pretty good. Let's get going. Um, the, the Cranky Pigeon, I am doing good-ish. I'm very tired today because um, I spent last night, I, I stayed up pretty late last night helping, helping out with a certain something that I'm going to keep secret even though it's not a big deal. Um... But yeah, so we'll, um, so yeah, I'm a little bit sleepy, but no big deal. Ah, oh, yeah, Wack can, um, one-shot magicians now. That's, that's good. Yeah, uh, do, do, do. Hi, uh, R692? I really can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not good at pronouncing stuff. But yeah, this game moves at a pretty decent speed. Um, it's just better structured than um, Dragon Warrior 2 as well, which is a plus because uh, Dragon Quest 2, Dragon Warrior 2. I've never played it, but I've done. I've looked up quite a few playthroughs, and damn, that game. Damn, like I, I just I feel bad for anybody who had to play that back on the NES. And that's all that I'll say about it, because, yeah. Oh, so, okay, cool, we got rid of all the magicians in one turn. Those guys are probably still the most annoying dudes that we can walk into around Romilly at this point. Because almost everybody else is small fry. Uh, those guys can still cast Blaze on us, though, and that will always do about 10 damage. I did not actually want to go in here. So, yeah, okay. Yo, uh, Stefan, sup? Uh, we want to get rid of the bees first because they can paralyze us. And that. Hey, yeah, um, Arctic 92 I know that it's it's still in the remakes. Uh, <laughs> um, I know that it's a little it's it's still pretty rough. Um, the grinding and the general BS in the end game as well. Um. It's actually funny, because I did some research on Dragon Quest II a little while ago. Um, when they were creating the game, uh, having multiple party members and multiple enemies was still very new to them. So, um, when they were originally balancing the difficulty of the game, uh, they had like an algorithm that they would run. And it's, I'm, I think it was similar to the one they used for the original Dragon Quest. 
Um, but here's the thing. It didn't really work out too great because it didn't, uh, it didn't kind of bring into effect the amount of difficulty that having multiple enemies would have. So originally when they were testing out the game, it had to be delayed for two extra months because the end game was literally unbeatable. So the BS, the Cave to Roan, Roan, uh, Hargon Castle, all of that BS in Dragon Quest II, that is the toned down version of those areas. Which I just, I find, I find hysterical. <laughs> so, yeah, we, I forgot, we had, um, completely, we had completely stocked back up on, on items once we had, uh, when we were in the, uh, when we had that trouble with Kandar. So, yeah, um, if you're familiar with Dragon Quest III, uh, we're going to do the Dream Ruby side quest right about now. Um... If you aren't familiar with Dragon Quest III, basically what that means is that um, there's a town up in the north here called no Nathaniel's, which is supposed to be the Netherlands, because the Dragon Quest III world map is based on the real world. Uh, but anyway, um, so we're heading up there um, right now, because the entire town, it, the town is put to sleep by a curse by some elves, and we're going to try to figure out what the hell's going up on with that. And Fireball might actually not work too well on these gas clouds. Oh, well, it, it did a f it did hit them, which is more than I expected at the very least. Um... R6, uh, I, I know that the game had a short development time by today's standards. It was definitely less than a year, I think. It, it might have technically been more, because I believe they started work on Dragon... Quest 3 before... Dragon Quest 3. I believe they started work on Dragon Quest uh, 2 before 1 was even technically finished. But don't quote me on that, I would have to look it back up again. Um, can you sleep the gas clouds? I've never actually tried that. Uh, b -b -b uh, Cranky Pigeon, I actually have not played uh, Bayonetta 2 yet. Um, I've only beaten Bayonetta 1 once, and I know that 2 fixes a lot of the issues I had with Bayonetta 1. Um, but I'll get around to it eventually. Um, I actually have to replay uh, Bayonetta 2, any, uh, B Bayonetta 1, I should say, because... Um, I'm in charge of playing Bayonetta 1 for Brain Scratch for some reason. I don't know why I got that job instead of Lewis or John, because I know both of them love that game, but it got handed off to me, so I gotta play through it again. And I, I started it, uh, actually, like a while ago, and I got through like the first six or so chapters, I believe. I definitely had the swords, I remember, uh, and at least one pair of claws, because the claws and the swords are my favorite weapons in Bayonetta. Um, but yeah. Uh, hello, Meluctory. Nice to see you again. Um, Venom Worms. Uh, you know what? Lara can... I bet Wack and X could finish off the Venom Worm. Lara can definitely one-shot a Gas Cloud, so I bet with an Ice Bolt, we should be able to take care of both Gas Clouds this turn. Oh! Or that could happen. That could definitely happen. Now, what's interesting about the Venom Worms is they're the supposedly the harder version of an enemy that we've already fought called the Caterpillars, but I believe they actually have less HP. So they they go down. If not, they either got the less less HP than the, their younger brothers, or um, oh, only like maybe five more. So yeah, it's it's yeah they go down pretty quick, but obviously they can poison you because they're Venom Worms. So you need to keep an eye eye out on them for that reason. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Uh... Um, Arc 6, uh, for Dragon Quest 2, I, I, I don't know if there's a beta out there, it's just development stories. Um, JD the BA, um, I... I played the Wonderful 101 demo, and I know that it's not considered to be a great demo, but it's still... I still wasn't a fan of how the game controlled. Which is a big thing, uh, for especially for that type of game. It needs to control well. So, I just had issues with the, the main control, and 
I'm just not interested enough to give it another uh, look. Maybe if I find it super cheap one day. Um, okay, so this is the Elf Village. I know that there's a lot of hidden stuff in here. Um, I actually have never been here at night, so I wonder what changes about it. You just say, Winnie. This is Elven Ham. Oh no! I'm not supposed to talk to humans. Yeah, the elves in Dragon Quest are kind of racist assholes <laughs> a lot of the time. So, um... Oh, oh, okay. Um, this guy. Um, we will not be able to talk to this shop for a long time. We need a specific key item to get any item, uh, to get any, um, items from here. But this is one of the best shops in the game because they can sell you wizard rings or prayer rings if you're more familiar with the modern translation. Uh, basically, they're like one of the only reliable MP restoring items in the game. And this is the only place in the game that sells them. Otherwise, you're stuck with very limited supplies that you find in chests. And yeah, it is very... I would recommend, before you give away the Staff of Change, uh, that you, you use the... Um, you, use, uh, you, you buy as many Wizard's Rings as you can reasonably afford at that point. Okay, I know that there's a couple of mini metals in this area, so I'm gonna search around for them before we talk to the Elf Queen. Um, then we'll probably zoom back over to, um, we'll probably zoom back over to, where's it's called, uh, Kazave to heal before the, the this next, um, we'll probably zoom over to Kazave for the, uh, the next, uh, for uh, an inn before the next uh, cave, because it's pretty rough. There's at least two mini metals in this area. It's like... Yeah, there's definitely at least two. Hold on a moment. I need to find that other one. Is it just down here? Eh, whatever. Okay, it's not a big deal if we can't find one. What could you humans want of Elven Pam? Yeah, so she cursed an entire town just because one guy uh, eloped with the, her daughter. So, they're, that seems very pleasant of them. Um, actually, a really interesting quirk of Dragon um, of Dragon Quest Three is, is that every time you use the return spell, it brings you to morning, which is weird, but not a huge deal. The inn is over here. Uh, FM, SF, FSMK, uh, Gaznor. I actually need to play through 9. I have a copy of the game. I recently bought it. But I'm waiting until after... I'm waiting until after, uh, I beat 7. In order to, um... In order to play it. Now we need to put these Mad Ravens to sleep, because they can attack twice in one turn. Which is bad, so... It was sleep that they were susceptible. Okay, oh, what? I could have sworn they had a better susceptibility to sleep. Thankfully, they're not super strong, though, otherwise. Like, I. Oh, of course, attack the one that's not asleep. Whatever. Eh. Sometimes RPGs are a little bit annoying, but. Okay, let's get going. Um. Yeah, we just need to get to Elvingham because... Well, not to Elvingham specifically. Uh... Um, hmm. Cranky, um... 
the burst jump in uh, Plague of Shadows I actually found kind of fun, if a little bit unwieldy. Um, it's I wouldn't say it necessarily makes the platforming any slower, because once you are, if you know how to do it right, you can zoom through levels stupid fast in Plague, uh, Plague of Shadows. But definitely, if you're trying to be meticulous about your platforming, which Shovel Knight does kind of teach you to do at points, um, I could I could see how it would make you feel like it's a little bit slower. So, I never really had too much of a problem with it, although I don't go back to replay Plague of Shadows very often. I mostly, if I'm going back to play Shovel Knight, it's usually for the main campaign. Although, um, I am super excited for Spectre Knight and King Knight. Uh, AB, AABX9, yo, um, this is a Game Boy Color game, but it was released around the time the Game Boy Advance, like, just came out, like, 2001. So, it's a very late Game Boy Color game, which is why all of the sprites are so well animated. They were able to basically push everything they could out of the, out of the Game Boy Color. Um... Aw, thanks, Sean. I'm happy to I'm happy to introduce new games to people. It always makes me feel good to hear that somebody took my recommendation to heart and they're enjoying a game because of it. It's it just it makes me feel good on the inside. Did I cast sleep on the ravens? I hope to God I did, because that would be very important to do. Because these guys are annoying if you don't. Ah, damn it. Okay, we're definitely... Hopefully he doesn't do too much damage to Whack, so we can heal before we go into that cave. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Miss Catherine. Catherine Science Lab person. Okay. We're in the, the Dream Ruby Cave. Um, it probably has a more official name than that, but I'm gonna call it the Dream Ruby Cave. Uh, yeah, so let's go get that Dream Ruby back so we can free Nathaniels from being all sleepy time. Okay, everybody needs a heal. Oh, see, it didn't take any damage. I am surprised. Okay, let's get going. What we need to... We could make a beeline to the to the Dream Ruby itself, but I like looking for treasure, so we're gonna go find that, too. I believe there's some decent stuff in here. Like, 200 gold, that's not chump change, so... A ba zero. um... I'll get Tokyo Mirage second Sessions eventually. Um, it's not a priority right now. I kind of don't want to pay full price for it, because I'm a little bit iffy on a lot of its various things. And I've got plenty of other games to play in the meantime. Oof, Madhounds. These guys are obnoxious. Uh, also, Vampires. They suck too. Um, can we put the Madhounds to sleep? Let's find out. Oh, they can be put to sleep. Awesome. Although they both woke up this turn, which sucks, but whatever. It prevented them from hitting me for one turn. These guys are the next tier up of enemies, pretty much. So they... They don't mess around. Especially since they cast... Oh, I forgot that they do that. They cast defense, which basically lowers our, our defense. Um... Uh, <laughs> So, they can do a decent amount of damage to us, so we want to kill them pretty quick. Oh, um, Luxury, I would absolutely, um, recommend Devil Survivor. I love it. Um, if you're not sure what kind of game it is, a Devil Survivor, it's a game in the Shimigami Tensei series, but in terms of, in terms of gameplay, um, it's kind of a tactical RPG, so every time you get into a battle, you're given, like, a Fire Emblem-style Actually, it's probably closer to a Final Fantasy Tactics-styled overworld. Um, I've never played that game, though. Um, and uh, you you have a couple of characters that you control, and they walk around, and you find other, like, demons or other humans, and you fight them. Uh, but what's interesting is, unlike a game like Fire Emblem, where the combat just kind of plays out when you select attack, when you choose to attack a unit, you're brought into a really short turn-paced RPG, where, like, you get a turn to attack the enemy, they get a turn to attack you and so on and so forth. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, I love Devil Survivor. It's one of my favorite Shimagami Tensei games. So I greatly recommend it if you're at all interested.
Uh, boo boo boo. Hold on, sorry, I'm just... Oh, I guess sleep isn't super effective on these madhounds. Hold on, I need to catch up on the, on the, on the chat, so give me a moment. Uh... What do I like about Dragon Quest as a series more than something like Final Fantasy or Mario RPGs? It's kind of hard to compare the Mario RPGs and Dragon Quest. They're both very different. But what I kind of like about Dragon Quest in comparison to Final Fantasy... Um, not to shit on Final Fantasy, because Final Fantasy has a lot of great games in it. In it, you know. So I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to to talk shit about that. Um, but in general, Dragon Quest is much more consistent. You know what you're getting into every time you play. Um, every every time you play a Dragon Quest game, you kind of know what you're getting into. So it's a little bit more consistent in that front. Whereas when you play a when you actually, I'm gonna take care of the Madhound first because they can cast defense and that's bad. Um, but anyway, uh, when you're playing a Final Fantasy game, every game is so different that. You know, you have to take each one individually. Um, on top of that, Dragon Quest doesn't fall into the trap that some Final Fantasies, not all of them, some of them, do, where they tend to take themselves a little bit too seriously. Um, Dragon Quest very much does not take itself too seriously. It knows when it knows when to be serious and it knows when to be goofy. So, uh, where some of the less, some of the more tone deaf Final Fantasies can sometimes be a little bit uh, melodramatic because of that. Um, I'm more, I'm talking more about, like, stuff like 8, uh, for instance, uh, where, like, they don't really have, where it's just kind of like, what? Or 13, from what I've seen of 13, it's, 13 doesn't have a very consistent tone at all. Um, so, yeah, um, also, the battle system, I think, is just, it's very, it's very simple, it's very easy to understand, and it's very well balanced. Um... Yeah, I'm again. I'm. I don't want to make it sound like I'm shit talking Final Fantasy because there's a lot of great games in Final Fantasy that I love. Uh, Final Fantasy IV is fantastic. I love seven. Six is really good. Um, I didn't get into nine, but I get why people like nine so much. Um, and there's even some merit to playing the three, but not one or two. Um, but even in the best Final Fantasy games, I still find myself not using a large majority of the magic that they give you. Wait, hold on. Uh, Dragon Quest 3 pro tip. Every time you exit or enter an area, the encounterment resets, so you can use that to avoid battles. Um, but anyway, um, even in some of the best uh, Final Fantasy games, the um, there's still some issues with like a lot of the spells not being super useful, like you would never really cast Toad in Final Fantasy VI, for instance, because there's no real reason to. So, yeah. Oh yeah, the Peter, uh, play Devil Survivor Overclocked over the original Devil Survivor. It's just the better game. Um, there's some small balance tweaks that make it a little bit more playable. Um, voice acting, I actually think the voice acting is very good in Devil Survivor Overclocked. Um... Um, and extra content, too. You get the eighth days in, um, in Devil Survivor Overclocked, and those are all fantastic. So, um, all three, yeah, I would say all three eighth days in, in Devil Survivor are, are great. So, yeah, Overclocked is definitely the version to go for. Same thing with if you want to play Devil Survivor 2, although I'm not a huge fan of Devil Survivor 2, uh, get Record Breaker on the 3DS, because that's, again, just the better version of the game. Uh, Arc 6, I've actually never played, um, uh, much of 5. I played some of 5, um, like, I, I played, um, I played, like, maybe 3 hours of 5. Um, I borrowed the, the GBA copy from a friend, um, and I was having a good time with it, too, uh, too, but I kind of, uh, got a little bit salty at it, <laughs> um, Excuse me, I walked the wrong way on the overworld map after, I think, getting, like, the second crystal. Um, I walked to the desert, and I think, like, a, a manticore came out of nowhere and kicked my ass. And 
I didn't save in forever. So I had to redo, like, a good... I would have had to redo, like, a good hour and a half of gameplay. I just wasn't up for that. So it's a game I need to give a fair shake eventually. Uh, but it's not a huge priority at the moment because I've got so many other games to play. On, um, especially coming up. Because Why did I do that? The Spring of Bravery is literally right here. Um, but anyway... Um, what am I trying to say? Gah, sorry, brain fart. Um, SMT4 Apocalypse, um, Dragon Quest Seven. I have nine after that, and I'm hoping to get... I'm hoping Eleven gets brought out over here. Um, there's a lot of games that I want to play. Uh, RPGs, I should say. So, Final Fantasy V, not a huge priority. It's something I'll get to eventually. I'm not actually sure what Final Fantasy game I want to play next. It might be 5. I do want to revisit 4, because 4 is fantastic. Um, and I've only been able to finish it once. Um, what else do I want to play for Final Fantasies, though? I've already played plenty of 6. I don't feel the need to replay 7. Um, oh, Toadstools are very susceptible to sleep. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't feel the need to replay uh, 7. Um, hmm... I, yeah, I'm not sure what Final Fantasy game I want to play next. Catherine, I'll play Final Fantasy X if you play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. How about that? And you'll have to tie me down to get me to play Final Fantasy X too. Okay, miss. <laughs> Alright, because I'm not touching that game with a 10-foot pole if you can't, if I'm not being forced to. Uh, I do not remember the layout of this cave at all. <laughs> I think the toadstools I don't remember being too annoying. Those mushroom enemies can normally be kind of a bitch, but... I actually have not been giving the vampires enough time. Oh, Ice Bolt! That's why I didn't want them lying around. That'll do a good 20 damage to any member of the party at this point in the game. So that's... Okay, now I remember why I needed to take out those vampires. Okay. I just knew that they were bad. Uh, that they were bad news. I didn't remember why. <laughs> You guys play RPGs for the battle system? Man, what losers. You play it to see who's waifus with who. Gosh, I can't believe you guys don't know how to play video games. Jesus. Okay, let's get going. I believe treasure is up. Or maybe not. Oh, Stefan, I have no interest in playing Final Fantasy XIII. Any of the games. Absolutely zero. Um, I did watch a playthrough of Dragon Quest. I, not Dragon Quest. I've watched plenty of Dragon Quest playthroughs, though. That is true. Um, I've watched a playthrough of... Oh, God, come on. Really? Um, but I've watched a playthrough of Final Fantasy XIII, and... Oh, Madhouse? Oh, none of them are affected by Bang? Really? Oh, that sucks. Um, what was I going to say? I watched a playthrough of thirteen one. Oh, no, 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 damn it. Ugh. Okay, now I know why to take care of toadstools. Um, I watched a playthrough of 13-1. The battle system looked... Eh. Oh, I need, to give a, I need to give an herb to X, otherwise he will probably die. <laughs> yeah, this is why defense sucks. Or getting hit by defense sucks. Um... I really can't wait until we get Sia to learn to in the increase spell, because that is basically the opposite of defense. It increases all the defense of all the members of your party. So that's one of the best spells in the game. Um, but yeah, the battle system to 13 looked eh, okay, I guess. I wasn't a fan of the... I wasn't... I didn't really understand how the whole job switching thing really worked all the way, but it looked like it was passable. Um, I wasn't a fan of how kind of um, bloated the numbers became, though. That's kind of just a, a nitpick of mine, but I don't like... One thing, one minor thing that I dislike about Final Fantasy is, is that the numbers get so large that they effectively become meaningless. Like, I, I'm not a... F <clears throat> and this is mostly just me growing up with Paper Mario. Um, in Paper Mario, since attacks do such little damage like you start off and your attacks do one damage and your enemies might have like three health having knowing how much damage specifically you're going to be doing with each move is very important to me 
just because I enjoy... I feel like it adds more strategy. It's it, Again, this is a minor nitpick, but one thing about Final Fantasy is it just feels like you throw magic at something until it's dead, and you, can, you can't really tell where you are in the process of beating it. And to compare that to Dragon Quest, where you're de generally dealing with numbers under 100 most of the time, until you get to late game, you can generally say, like, okay, this guy's got around 50 health, if I attack him with these two guys, he should die. Again, it's it's minor nitpicks, but it's just sort of my preference. But anyway, I'll look at the... I'll look at the comments once I... Um, I'll look at the comments once I... finish this fight, because... I do not like the sight of three toadstools and two vampires. <laughs> okay, I'm lying because I'm actually looking at the screen right- I'm actually looking at the chat right now. Okay, let's see. Oh, Golden Sun! Yeah, I need to play Golden Sun. I actually have- I've Oh, damn it! How did Sia end up with such li- Oh, no! Okay, we're running. We're running. I, I can't get out of here without my mage. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, um, this sucks. This sucks hard, because especially since Sia knew the outside spell. Because, oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> no. Come on, this should get us out. Okay, good. Well, we can spare the one step to the... Oh, great, we found a spear. Wonderful. Do any of the, do the rest of us know outside? Um, does return return doesn't work in caves? I don't think. Hmm. Okay. Here's what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna heal up. We're gonna run from fights. We're gonna try to see if I can backtrack to the Spring of Bravery. If that allows us to if that cures Sia, we'll keep on going. If not, we're gonna go. We're gonna try to make our way back out of out of this dungeon. Beef. That was not good luck. Okay, good. Now we're getting good luck with with running. Okay, that's that's better, ish. Wait, hold on. Just to avoid a fight, we're gonna do the in and out trick. Yeah, I, I own I old own Golden Sun. I got it as a Club Nintendo reward before. Nope, that didn't bring her that didn't bring her back to life. Okay, no 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 biggie. We'll be fine. Um, we can backtrack out of here. No big deal. And then we can we can return back to we can return back to what's it called? Kazave to get ourselves healed. Not a huge not a huge issue. But I, I own Golden Sun. I got it as a Club Nintendo reward a while ago. It's been on my back burner forever. I've just... I don't know. I just... Well, since we got hurt, we might as well... And we're only two steps away. We might as well use the spring again. Uh, but anyway... Yeah, Golden Sun on my to-do list. I'll get to it eventually. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Okay, good. Yeah, I believe if we take this path, we will run into less random battles. So let's get going. Uh, yeah, because there's only two floors to this dungeon, so it's... No, that's a treasure room. So it's pretty short. And we only have to get outside in order to to teleport. Normally, I could just use the outside spell, which is kind of like an escape rope from Pokemon. But unfortunately, the only character who knows outside is the one who's dead. So, yeah. Uh, later, Sean. Um, we're probably gonna go for about two hours, I would say. Um, I, that's, I think, a good rough estimate, because that's about as long as I generally feel like playing this game at any given point, so... Yeah, come on. Okay, there we go. Phew. Now we're gonna cast Heal, because I don't want to have to pay for more than one Resurrection, because... Yeah. Obvious. Okay. Let's get going. Um, Catherine, I wouldn't be too surprised uh, if it if it does happen, especially if the rumors of it being. I I wouldn't be too surprised if it happened. I remember seeing something 
Like, like, especially considering that Cloud is in Smash Brothers. Like, that's a huge, that's a huge thing. So, I wouldn't be too surprised. Again, it's not a shoe in I would say, that the Final Fantasy remake comes out on the, the, the Final Fantasy VII remake comes out on a, on the NX, but I wouldn't say it's completely unlikely, I think is the best way to put it. Small donation of 130 gold. Do I accept? Yes. I'm, hmm, I'm not sure if I, how I feel about Final Fantasy XV, to be perfectly honest. It just kind of looks like an eh game to me. I don't know what about it has kind of got me unexcited, but it's just I don't, I can't find myself caring too much about Final Fantasy XV. So, eh. Yeah, that's just basically my only opinion on Final Fantasy XV is eh. So, the spear, you'll pay. Okay. So that, at the very least, that spear, selling that spear, at the very least, paid for the resurrection. And for the end. So, yeah. And we found a repellent off of one of the enemies, so I'm going to try to use that to cut down on our backtracking time. Catherine, there's a lot of rumors flying around about NX um, specs, but... Oh, we've got two repellents. How the hell did that happen? Um, there's a lot of rumors, but nothing consistent. It would help if they just released a press... This fight looks gross. This fight looks absolutely disgusting. Uh... Yeah, um, there's a lot of rumors, nothing confirmed. I'm guessing we'll probably hear something about it. I'd hope by September. I think that they would need to do it by September if they want to hit their May... their... not their May, their... They, if they want to release it in February, I think they need to get it. They need to talk about it by September at the latest in order to get the hype machine rolling appropriately. Because otherwise, like, you're just, you're doing um, something like the Saturn did, where they released it too soon after announcing it. And nobody could get excited about the thing because, like, they didn't know what it was. So, you need to give it a couple of months of rev-up time in order to make sure that people actually know what they're buying. Yeah, that's what I, I... I agree with you, Catherine. That's why I'm taking all the rumors with a grain of salt. Because I don't know what they are, basically. So... Like, yeah, I don't care about... I don't care about rumors. Like, there's... Some weird stuff going on about the rumors, which I don't... So, it's all inconsistent, so I just kind of want the thing to be announced. Hopefully with some... Honestly, if the launch li lineup is good enough, I won't really care about the specs. Like, if they... If Pikmin 3... Not Pikmin 3. <laughs> I'm so used to talking about Pikmin 3 as a game that doesn't exist yet. It's actually kind of funny. Um, but... If Pikmin 4 is a launch title, I'm sold day one. Instantly. Because um, I love Pikmin. Um... I think other games that would get me to buy it day one, um, a 3D Mario, if it looked good, I think would be a good day one title. Um, I'm not sold on Zelda as a, as a, Zelda isn't a system seller for me, for the NX, but if I do get an NX, I'm going to be getting Zelda, if that makes sense. But yeah, um, Pikmin 4 would be a system seller for me for the NX. Also, um, if they did anything with Splatoon, that would probably get me to buy the, the NX. Um, but mostly, I'm hoping on Pikmin because that's the only game that's been officially announced <laughs> for the damn... for That's been officially announced to be a thing, even. Like, Pik we know that Pikmin 4 exists, and that's about it. Which really reminds me of Pikmin 3 when that was announced, because for, like... A good four years, we knew Pikmin 3 exists, and that was about it. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, Catherine, I can understand. If you don't care too much about Nintendo first-party IPs, there's not too much to buy on the thing. Um... Like, because you're the weirdo that doesn't like Mario, so... If you don't like Mario, there's, you know... If you don't care about Mario, like, why would you buy a system for a Mario game? Like, that makes sense. Um, hold on, I had a, I had a thought there, but 
for me personally, I would buy a an X just for Pikmin because I love the series that much. Although I know that if they announced Animal Crossing for the NX, you'd be on that that day one because you're an addict. You're an addict for Animal Animal Crossing. It is true. I'm pretty sure it is true that Catherine is an Animal Crossing addict because I believe her total time on that is like 400 hours. I think. I'm pretty sure it's more than my Hyrule Warriors time. Uh, it's gotta be more than my Hyrule Warriors time at this point. So, yeah. Hero Art, I actually don't really want a... I actually don't really want a Galaxy 3. I, I love Galaxy 1. Don't get me wrong, it's one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. But Galaxy 2 is just kind of okay to me for a number of different reasons that I kind of get into in the Brain Scratch run. But uh, part of what I want from a 3D Mario game is for them to do something unique and unexpected that would hopefully give me that same reaction that I got the first time I played Galaxy. That, I think, would be the best solution. Oh, come on! <sighs> All four characters, but no, 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 no. <sighs> These two are a devastating combo. Like, put me all to sleep and wail on me while my defense is down. That is... Yeah, that is the... That is... That is potentially devastating. Yeah, uh, 10 and 11 for Dragon Quest are confirmed for the NX in Japan. Healers, not healers, what am I talking about? Uh, Dragon Quest Builders is rumored for the NX, um, but we don't know anything about Dragon Quest 10 or even 11. We don't even have 11 confirmed coming to the West on PS4 and 3DS. If it come, I will say, if we get Dragon Quest XI on one console, we'll be getting them for them all. So that's good, at the very least. But, we're not, we don't even know about Dragon Quest XI. I would guess, I, apparently it's supposed to be a launch title. XI's supposed to be a launch title for the NX in Japan. I don't know how likely that is, but that's the rumor. We're not getting Dragon Quest XI until, if we're getting it at all, we're not getting it until 2018. That's my guess. <laughs> Catherine, I seriously don't think that Dragon Quest XI will look that much worse on the NX than the PS4. Because the Wii U is essentially equivalent to a to a PS3 and Xbox One, spec-wise, right now. Roughly. I don't get all tech bullshit on me right now, other people in the, the chat. So, um, yeah, it's about roughly equal to a... Um, it's about roughly equal to a PS3 and Xbox 360 right now, the Wii U. So if they're going to be doing a new console, there's, it's got to be, it's, it has to be at least a, a uh, it has to be at least close-ish to PS4, Xbox One. It has to be. If not, then what's the point of even making an upgrade, you know? So, I'd say it would look close. I'd think that any graphical differences would be minor at best between an NX version and a PS4 version of Xbox, of Dragon Quest uh, 11. So it's not a huge, oh, we learned Inferno, so that'll be good. Um, but yeah, it, any differences graphically between the two versions will be minor at best, I would, I would have to guess. Because they already have the low graphics version of Dragon Quest uh, 11, and that's the 3DS one. So I don't think they'd want to make like a mid-range graphics version, because, Working on two different versions of a game is already time taxing enough. I would think that if they would want to make one HD version of the game and port it between the two consoles, that it, that is what makes the most sense to me in this particular moment. It could have performance issues like Bayonetta on the PS3, but um, it could. That is a possibility. I will admit that. Okay, actually... Let's have X and Lara attack. Well, I want to show off Infernos, because the it's the, the Woosh family, if you're familiar with the new uh, names. It's got a pretty cool animation, so I'll show that off. 
Oh yeah, Catherine, it could be like the bear version. And then you'd feel all silly for buying it on the PS4. Huh? Yeah. Uh, the one thing about Woosh slash Infernos that annoys me is how random the damage is. It's like, it's got the widest damage range of any type of spell. Like, for the, the space version, it's like anywhere between like 13 and 30. Whereas most of the time, there's like a range of like maybe 5, 10 damage, as opposed to Woosh, which is like a 20 range. Uh, it's... It's, it's strange. <laughs> okay, let's heal up. Okay, does anybody else need heals? We're fine. Okay, let's get going. Boop -doop. Okay, we did not go this way. Um, this is the way we're supposed to go. Damn it. Oh yeah, guys, buy Dragon Quest 7 VII and 8, because those games are probably going to be fantastic. Um, I know that they're probably the best version... Well... Dragon Quest VII on the 3DS is the best version of the game to play, just because it's a clear graphical upgrade. I am I would have to look at comparison pictures between Dragon Quest VIII on, um, on 3DS and Dragon Quest VIII on PS2 to see which one's graphically superior, but I personally prefer playing RPGs on handhelds and, um, and extra content. There's extra content on the, on the 3DS version. Dragon Quest VIII on the PS2 only has four playable characters. Um, the hero, Yangus, Angela, not Angela, the hero, Yangus, Jessica, and Angelo are the only playable characters in Dragon Quest VIII uh, on the PS2, which is interesting. They add two more for the 3DS remake, which is cool. And not having too many playable characters isn't a huge issue because it allows them to have a very focused party, but it's still kind of weird considering that every game since, um, I think that's, yeah, it's the first Dragon Quest game. Dragon Quest VIII is the first Dragon Quest game since 2. Dragon Quest II on the NES. It's the first game to have a set member of party, a set party, that you cannot change at all. Which is really interesting to me. Um, but I, I still need to play 8. It's on my, that's on my to-do list. But at this point, I'm just waiting for that. I'm just waiting for that, um, 3DS port. Which I'm so glad got officially confirmed for, for over here. Because that's like, considered, oh my gosh guys, it's the best Dragon Quest game. There's items over here. Sure. Hold on a moment. Yeah, Dragon. Is there? Nope. Okay. Dragon Quest Eight, if you guys are unfamiliar, is kind of like the dra the Final Fantasy Seven uh, of Dragon Quest, whereas it's everybody's favorite. So um, I'm kind of going in expecting not to like it as much as everybody else does, but I actually did like Final Fantasy Seven a lot. So you know, we'll never know. Um, Uh, ba ba ba. Apparently, the Dragon Quest VIII on, uh, already had English voices, and from what I've heard of them, they're not bad. Um, so, yeah, um, the voice acting in Dragon Quest Heroes, though, is spectacular. That's another game I have to play. Oh, yeah, here's our defense, uh, thing. I'm gonna give it to Sia. But I believe this accessory also changes her personality. Yeah, she's the romantic type with the rosary equipped. I don't know why. So I'm actually, I like her being smart because that gives her boosts to, that gives her boosts to intelligence. So I'm going to instead equip it onto, onto Whack because I don't care what her, I don't care what her personality is as much. So, damn it. Oh, only one vampire. I can handle this. No big deal. Oh yeah, Gaznor, 3DS did have Tales of the Abyss. Um, that game, Tales of the Abyss has issues. <laughs> I did beat it though, which is something, because I actually, I loved Tales of Symphonia from what I've played, and I didn't beat it because of a number of issues that came up during the time when I was trying to play through it. Um, whereas Tales of the Abyss, I have a lot of issues with that game, and I got to the end of that one. So, yeah, that doesn't make too much sense. Oh, Karnamoths, these guys are annoying. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Mm. Yeah, that seems good. Catherine, I didn't hate Tales of the Abyss, but it had a lot of problems. Um, most notably, like, 
there's stuff about the the story that I like, but it also has a lot of really dumb points. Like, for instance, one of people's main issues with uh, Tales of the Abyss is its main character, uh, Luke. That's his name. I actually thought that Luke was a very interesting character, personally. Because one of the things about Luke is, is that he's an insufferable jackass. Um, but in a lot of ways, he's got a stronger sense of... Uh, he's got a str he's, in a lot of ways, he's got a stronger moral compass than the rest of the party. Uh, for example, very early on in the game, um, there's a scene where, in self-defense, Luke has to kill a, an enemy soldier. And he's really freaked out about having to kill somebody. Like, absolutely devastated by it. Where the rest of the... The rest of the party is just kind of like, this is something you just gotta do, kid. Um, and that's just really interesting to me, because although he's... He's, he's an asshole. He's a gigantic, gigantic asshole. Um, he's still got, arguably, a stronger sense of morality than some of the other characters in the game. Now, granted, there are irritating parts of, of Tales of the Abyss's storyline. For instance, I um, Luke become Luke transitions from being a well, a well-written asshole to just like a straight-up insufferable prick during like. I'd say, like, the 30 to 40% mark of the game, right before he has, like, his big character moment where he's like, oh, I'm gonna be less of a jerk. There's, like, this point where he's made an ambassador, where he's just a complete... He's completely insufferable during that point, and it kind of undoes a lot of the... the interesting things they did with his character earlier on in the game. Um, also, there's other issues with the story as well, like, there's a lot of really blatant symbolism revolving over religion. A lot of the plot points are just stupid. Um, and there's so much backtracking in Tales of the Abyss. Oh my god, you have to walk through old dungeons like 20 times. It's ridiculous. But I did play it to the end. It's not the worst game I've ever played, so... Oh, wait, hold on. This is the Dream Ruby chest. Um, yeah. Okay, oh, this is a really sad note, too. Um, please forgive us, Mother. If love between an elf and a human is forbidden in this life, we will be lovers in heaven. Yeah, that's... That's really kind of tragic, where they 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 kill themselves because their 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 love is for like, damn! I am actually really interested to see how they translated that in the original Dragon Quest, uh, the original uh, the original Dragon Warrior three on the NES, because Dragon Warrior three, all the Dragon Warrior games, while being better written than most of the other uh, games that you would see on the NES at that point. Um, like, the translation and localization in the original Dragon Warrior games is very good for the time. They unfortunately still had to deal with a lot of Nintendo's, uh, policies at that point, because they were very, uh, stringent on, like, not having religious symbolism, you know, taking out violence, things like that. Um, in the U.S., um, in the, in the Dragon Quest games, like, for instance, uh, you, when you die, you have a coffin following behind you. In the U.S. versions, they had to take out the coffins and replace them with little ghosts because they had crosses on them, and that was bad. Same thing with, like, all the churches had the crosses taken off, so... I wonder if the suicide note made it through unscathed in the NES version. That's actually pretty interesting to think about. But, yeah. Um, let's see, did we learn a new spell? Oh, sweet! We learned Return! Uh, awesome. Now we don't have to worry too much about keeping the heroes MP up. But there's still a few things we can explore in this cave, so we're not going to be leaving right away. Um... Like this chest, which retained a decent chunk of change. <gasps> An electri oh, Gareth's having his baby? Or I should say, Carrie's having their baby? Oh man, awesome! I'm gonna have to take a look at that uh, later. Um, oh man, I really hope I really hope it all goes out okay. I'm gonna be Uncle Ted, and I'm gonna spoil that kid rotten. And by spoil that kid rotten, I mean if they knew what was good for their baby, they would never let me get anywhere close to it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, let's get out of here. Yeah, um, um, R6, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right for the record. Um, I'm not gonna be able to look at it until after the stream's over, but I'll just, I'll just check, check Twitter. So, yeah, thank you, though. Um, so anyway, let's go give the Dream Ruby to Elf Mom. Okay. That, and hey, could it be the Dream Ruby? 
Oh, the suicide note made it through. I'm interested. That's... I'm surprised that they managed to let a suicide note get through. Um... Because, um... If you're familiar with Dragon Quest, there's a running joke called the Puff Puff Massage. Um... Where, like, it's kind of implied that, oh, you're getting boobs rubbed in your face. But the, in a lot of the later games, they kind of subvert the joke in, in, in a lot of interesting ways. In the original Dragon Quest, uh, the original Dragon Warrior on the NS, and NES, the woman instead says, Tomatoes, buy fresh tomatoes. <laughs> oh, uh, b -b -b Skype just went off. Oh, okay. Um, we've been going for about an hour. Um, fine, take this wake dust and go back to the village and undo the curse. Anne would have wanted that. Oh, Anne, forgive your mother. Oh, okay. Um, I might actually cut it a little bit short today, just because... Um, uh, we did finish the, sub the side quest, which was what I was intending to do all along, so... After I deal with no annuals, like, talk to everybody in the town and all that, I think I'm gonna call it a day. I know that this is a little bit shorter than no what I've normally had it done, but, um, uh, something just kind of came up, uh, I noticed on Skype, so I want to kind of cut it a little bit short. So, yeah. Oh, they had the Puff Puff Massage in, in Dragon Quest, not Dragon Quest, in Final Fantasy XIV. Aw, that's cute. The wind scattered the wake dust. Cheetos! No, those are Doritos. Cool, we woke up the village of no annuals. Awesome. By the way, this side quest, completely optional. You can skip it if you want. I don't even know what your reward for doing this is, other than, like, maybe information for the rest of the game. My son eloped with a young woman. Ah, uh, this, this, it's so sad. Ah, oh. this, this, this little, this little side quest breaks my heart every time. Why does it feel like I've been asleep for ages? Like, they don't really know how. Yeah, like, these people have been asleep for literally years. <laughs> I do like that they kind of make fun of the random villagers telling you shit about battle items that uh, they they kind of they kind of make fun of that joke here <gasps> oh yes okay uh oh no wait the wizard wand just shoots out blazes which really isn't all that worth it actually i'm not gonna bother buying the uh, wizard's wand this playthrough but the evade cloak i'm still going i'll get it for sia but for nobody else um yeah i'll get the evade cloak for sia because not only is it a better defense, it also gives her a higher chance of being, of missing, of attacks missing entirely, which is good. And I can sell the leather dress that I found and the, uh, the turtle armor for a decent chunk, chunk of change anyway. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, no, I didn't mean to bring up my menu. Um. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know that that token was there. Uh, awesome. I believe... Oh, wait, hold on. I know why you're supposed to... Yes. Oh, you're so rude. Oh, awesome. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot this. Uh, this woman's like, I must have... Did you do anything funny? No. Oh, I'm not unattractive? Okay, what do you want, woman? <laughs> Okay, I believe you're supposed to um, talk to somebody. Ortegos, you saved me from monsters and let me back to the village. You had such muscular arms. Yeah, let's... I believe you have to talk to one of these people for a hint about where to go next. Biggest statement in the store until we left. Going to Ashlam to find a magic... Oh yeah, that's where you learn about where the magic key is supposed to be. Okay. That's basically our next plot important goal, is to get the magic key. Yeah, you can skip this entire thing, uh, but it, you get some information, and also it's just, it makes you feel good, so. Okay, 
hold on. There's definitely more people left to talk to. Oh, wait, no, there's nobody in this house now that that guy's out of it. Um... Is there any other people in this house, in this place? Oh, there's this kid. Okay, yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna cut it a little bit early today. Um, sorry about that, but I did have a good time. Uh, we got, um, we got our main goal done, and next time we can head to Ashlam, which is where I think the game's difficulty really not takes it up a notch, so. Let's heal up and get saved. I'm glad you guys enjoy the stream. It always makes me feel good to see that people like the little, the little shit I do. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks to the next level. I think we're close to... Nope, we're not close to the levels on anybody. Yes, I do. Yeah, sorry, uh, X9, but, um, something just came up, and, um, I need to cut it a little bit early this time. So, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you all later.